Wherever you go in Vietnam, you'll find a little orange pill waiting for you. Its whole name is the chloroquine primaquine phosphate malarial tablet. You probably know it as the pill. That little bit of scientific know-how is your insurance against malaria. So what's a little case of malaria? Nothing, if you don't mind a lifetime of cramps and chills. A very short lifetime. The combined forces of the U.S. and the South Vietnamese were successful in defeating the communist forces, with much credit going to General Wayland for having the foresight to defend Saigon. The U.S. military reacts with search and destroy sweeps throughout Saigon and South Vietnam, hoping to eliminate refugee enemy soldiers. March 16, 1968. After the Tet Offensive, Viet Cong soldiers are suspected of hiding out in the village of Son Mi. The area, known as Pinkville, is known for being highly booby-trapped by the Viet Cong. Charlie Company of the 1st Battalion, 20th Infantry Regiment, 11th Brigade, 23rd Infantry, suffers 28 casualties in their first few months in South Vietnam. The orders given to the angry soldiers is clear. This is what you've been waiting for. Search and destroy, and you've got it. Yeah, I heard about some of the guys going out there in the villas and uh, talking about blowing away people. And you know, you see your buddies getting shot next to you, you're getting hit at night, and you can't do nothing. And uh, you know, some guys did go off a little bit too. You know, I've seen some guys, even in fact, shoot themselves to get out of the field because they didn't want to be out there. The troopers, under the command of Lieutenant William Calley, enter the village on a search and destroy mission that quickly becomes a massacre. Over 300 unarmed civilians are killed, including women, children, and the elderly. One girl is raped and murdered. Callie allegedly orders a group of villagers to line up by an open ditch and shoots them down with his machine gun. One of my flight instructors uh, was with the AmeriCal Division, and he used to fly over the, the uh, four Malai vi vi villages. And once uh, Lieutenant Callie went through Malai 4, I think that, that was the number of the village that the uh, massacre uh, happened in, he said that they never, be, prior to that, they would always receive uh, enemy fire from the Malai villages. He said after it happened, they never received one enemy uh, round fired at them. I couldn't believe it. First thing I thought, thought was Lieutenant Callie being used as a scapegoat because where was his sergeant? Where was the sergeant and why wasn't he keeping his men in line? Around 0900, Warrant Officer Hugh Clowers Thompson Jr. flies back over My Lai in his observation helicopter to provide air support for the infantry below. He and his crew witness Captain Ernest Medina executing a woman point blank. Then, they see the ditch full of bodies. After an altercation with Cowley, Thompson lands his helicopter between 10 civilians fleeing from soldiers from 2nd Platoon C Company. Evacuating the villagers with the help of two UH-1 Huey gunships and saving a young boy buried with the dead in the ditch, Thompson furiously makes an official report of the killings upon his return to base. The operation's commander, Lieutenant Colonel Frank Barker, immediately seeks an answer from Medina, who then orders a ceasefire to Charlie Company. In the effort to cover up the My Lai massacre, the government rewards Thompson with the Distinguished Flying Cross. It cites Thompson for saving a Vietnamese child and for enhancing Vietnamese-American relations in the operational area. Thompson throws the citation away in disgust. March 22, 1968. Our main thing was that siege at Quezon with the Marines, and um, they were really taking a beating up there. And then one day they moved us up to Quezon, which was, uh, the first time that I ever think we had incoming artillery, we were sent up there to shoot at some guns that were in the, in the mountain that were shooting at the uh, Marine base. It, it just seemed different that 
coming back at you. You never knew what artillery was. You were always the one shooting it out. And then uh, we had tanks coming after us. We had troop movements all around us. And then eventually the rest of the 1st Cav Infantry walked in the caisson and took care of a lot of stuff there and relieved the Marines at the base. And I noticed some Marines that ain't going to say that story is true. <laughs> Since the initial attack, Quezon continues to withstand enemy barrages. The Marines build bunkers to withstand the enemy's 82 millimeter rounds. Things get quiet on March 6th. That is about to change. North Vietnamese forces restart their bombardment of the fort at a rate of 100 rounds every hour. The U.S. retaliates with bombing. It is not until April 8th that the siege ends. 77 days since the attacks started, over 1,600 North Vietnamese soldiers have been killed. Countless thousands more were killed by the bombings, their bodies blown to bits. As the Americans abandon and destroy Khe Sanh by June, both sides claim victory. It is, at best, a hollow one. Meanwhile, positive public perception of the war continues to wane. After his own trip to Vietnam, respected journalist Walter Cronkite offers his own view on the war in February, calling the war in Vietnam a stalemate. He says, the only rational way out, then, will be to negotiate, not as victors, but as an honorable people who lived up to their pledge to defend democracy and did the best they could. America is startled. You know, we were in North Vietnam for the uh, Tet Offensive. This is supposed to be the, uh, the big, it's the thing, and Walter Cronkite says, oh God, we gotta get out of here, this is awful. Our losses were minuscule in, in uh, the Tet Offensive compared to the North Vietnamese, which lost 25% of its male population between uh, the ages of 19 and 21. And you think, that's incredible. They were on their knees, ready to, to uh, throw in the towel. And then uh, LBJ offered them peace talks. And they couldn't, they couldn't believe it. They said, God, this is one. I can't believe these idiots. North Vietnam rushed their preparations for a savage assault on the people, the government, and the allies of South Vietnam. Their attack during the Tet Holiday failed to achieve its principal objective. It did not collapse the elected government of South Vietnam or shatter its army as the communists had hoped. It did not. The communist forces did incur a military loss in the Tet Offensive, but it was a psychological victory against the United States and against its commander in chief. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.